Hey guys, this video is part two of the Ant Corner update. First up, we have my oldest colony, my Lassius Nigers. The queen is around seven years old and they have been in their natural setup for about five months. And so far, so good. They have multiple openings to where they've been nesting and we often see them move and brood around. So we know the queen is alive and well. Isopods don't seem to last long with these ladies. So I do have to add more nearly every month. I do miss seeing the Queen who we had named the Machine, but I'm sure she's happy in her new natural setup. I do have to keep a close eye on the plants, they grow so fast and the ants waste no time in climbing out. Other than that they are pretty laid back and they don't even really swarm, but I don't think they're ever really hungry enough to need to rush to food. They are kept really well fed, because as soon as their needs are not completely met they are the first to try and escape. They never follow the rules and even store their eggs in the drainage layer now. Other than that, I love them. Next up we have Lassius Flavus. This is a single queen colony and they have been in their natural setups for around a year. Their tank is not as pretty because whatever I put in, they bury. The moss did not stand a chance with them and I'm sure I've lost several ant bowls to the soil. These are one of my favourite species though and I think they're just adorable. They're absolutely no hassle to keep. The downside is most of the time you can't see any of the workers as they spend most of their time under the ground. But when I put in fresh food, they come out in force and they either demolish it straight away or spend a couple of hours covering the food in soil, never to be seen again. I think these are so great to keep and very underrated. Apart from constantly redecorating and not letting you have a say in how the natural setup looks, they are great. Think the slate path that was in there must be at least a couple of inches underground now and I've never added any extra soil. Here's a pic of how the tank used to look, much different now. And the difference inside of workers is crazy. Look at the size difference between these two. Now we have Miracle Rubra. These went into natural set up around the same time as the flavours, so about a year ago. They are not doing great and I think they must be close to completely dying out. At most I see 10 workers out at one time and these ladies used to be so aggressive and swarm any food like crazy. I've had them a good few years now and I have no idea how old they were when I got them or if they were split from a larger colony, so I've got no idea of their age. They are still taking a little bit of protein as well as sugars, so I'm just going to let them do their thing. Next up on the shelf below that we have my Dubia roaches. Before I kept roaches, I never in a million years thought that I'd keep them in my home. Now with all my colonies to feed, I can't imagine not keeping roaches. I do sometimes get mealworms, but easy 90% of the protein that the ants get is from roaches. They are super easy to keep and I chuck in all sorts of fruits and veggies and fish food and all sorts of just scrap foods that are leftovers. Every six to eight weeks I clean them out fully and they have two tubs and I'll just set up a clean one, move them all in, clean up the old one ready for the next clean out. I do leave some of their poop in because I think the babies eat it and I'm sure that's what I was told before. But anyway, that's what I've been doing and it's been working well. I do try to keep a ratio of one male to five to six females and every four months or so I will buy a few more just to mix up the gene pool. Then we have the isopods. Where do I start? I have several different types of isopods and I won't even pretend that I know what they are called. In the tank next to the nigers is the orange and the dairy cows and in the other tubs there are some zebra ones, some grey ones. Some big ones called lavas, I think, and clown is sounding familiar for some reason. And then I got some blackish ones that I found on a walk in a local country park. All of them have had babies, some more frequently than others. The grey, the orange and the dairy cows seem to be the most reproductive. And to be fair, they're always going at it like rabbits, so I can understand why. When my natural setups run low of isopods, I just replace them from the tubs. Mostly I feed them carrots, apples, fish food, chicken and leftover roach remains. Absolutely nothing of the roaches goes to waste. Now back to the ants. 
On the top shelf we have Campanotus slovaticus, something like that. My daughter was gifted this colony from the ant lady and they've been doing really well. They're just in a tub and tube setup, and they're just a lovely species to keep. Feeding we pretty much stick to roaches and sugar snaps. Very slow growth but with some of our colonies going absolutely insane at the moment the slowness is a blessing. On the same shelf we have Campanotus vachenkoi. Sadly these are not doing great down to just the queen and one worker, no eggs or anything. I've moved them into a Venus and hopefully she'll pick up, but I've no idea what I'm doing wrong. Next up we have the European fake or false honey pots. I got these off Pro Geek and I've got them in an Ants Canada test tube portal. They are obviously nothing even close to as impressive as the real honey pot ants. They're more like Niagara's that can get the odd worker with an extra chunky booty. This is a very young colony so maybe they'll become more impressive as time goes on but for now if I'm honest they don't get much attention and we just sort of feed them and leave them. Next up in yet another tubs and tubes setup, we have Mesa Lab colony. I don't know why my messes are always so slow but sometimes this happens. It's like an inflated egg. They seem super pumped up and light almost like a mini balloon and then they either deflate or disappear. If you have any idea what's going on, please let me know. Either comment down below with your theory or drop me a message on Instagram. Most of the eggs grow completely normal, but there always seems to be a few like that. And I've never seen it with any of my other colonies. So it'll be really interesting to find out what it could be. They only get seeds, roaches and water. I do offer them sugars, but I don't think I've ever seen them ever take any. Now for the colonies that I got from Antcon. First up we have the Cremogaster Scutellaris and again tubs and tubes set up and I'm really happy with how they're growing. They are just so cute. We do have a soft spot for these ladies and they are just a joy to keep. Pretty fast growing as well. Another tub and tube set up with Campanotus Lignoperda. She's a massive massive queen but she barely moves. She just lays there. She has a couple of workers, not the most exciting species, but really nice and slow to keep. I enjoy keeping them. Finally, we have a small Campanotus cruentatus colony. These are again in tub and tube setup. These are Happy Ant UK's colony, but he struggled with cruentatus before, so I agreed to raise them till he had his first workers, just to get them going. Now they have six workers and the queen lays really well, and I'm really happy with the progress. It will be sad to see them go. Now that should be the end for part two, but I went to an invert show in Bristol and I got a couple of millipedes, which are super, super cute. And how could I see these amazing stalls and not get anything? It was absolutely awesome seeing Antantix and Wakushi there. And I was meant to just be window shopping but then my amazing husband come to pick me up and he treated me to something from each stall. Obviously, from Wakushi, I got my favourite set up, the Saturn. And much to my husband's delight, Wakushi had sold out, so I had to take the one that was ready, ready built on display. And then from Antantix, I got Sugar Snaps, which obviously I adore, and saving the best till last, I got Campanotus Singularis. Ain't they just stunning? My queen even has a unique red patch on her back and they are huge. They are so beautiful. Beautiful, healthy colony and they do deserve a full video but I just had to show them to you all. And that's the end for part two of the Ant Corner update. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe. Bye.